technology. Um, but today is, you know, for the next few hours, what we're going to do is that we're going to start with yarn. I, I know you guys already get the agenda, so I'm not even like, printing out the waste paper. But yarn is actually going to start with um, application, like sort of the SEO of the App Store. And then after that, Nagi is actually going to talk about how you actually work with mobile app network and some of the tips that he has around monetization. Uh, and after that, we're going to take a about 10, 15 like, bio break. Um, and then we actually have Stephanie from Facebook going to come and talk about how user developers and how from a Facebook point of view you can use Facebook to drive mobile user acquisition. Um, and then I will actually talk about uh, Asia, particularly focus on China and some of the landscape there. And then we'll end with Bob, um, talk about mobile partnerships and some of the things that we have done with OEM and carriers and all of this stuff. So that's pretty much how we're going to spend the next three hours. And then after that, we're going to march half a block to 25 blocks and then half the hour going on and it's where I'm going to relax and then cure my cold. But anyhow, so that's uh, how we're going to do this for the, for the rest of the day. A uh, couple of uh, housekeeping items, first and foremost, before I forget, I really, really want to thank Founder Stan, and then particularly Michael, who is sitting right there, and Diana, who is sitting you know, at the corner. So Founder Stan, for some of you who don't know, is actually a co-working space for startup entrepreneurs. It's actually a very, very sort of exclusive. If you want to actually work here, you have to apply. Uh, and then Michael and Diana will have to see if you're cool enough to actually be here. So we really, really want to thank them, and let's give them a big round of applause for letting us see them. Amazing, uh, you know, sponsors over there. I'm not going to name all of them, uh, and I definitely really like our space. So, so we do this stuff. But anyway, um, so thank you so much, all of you guys, for coming. A uh, couple other housekeeping items. Uh, if you guys need to, really need to go to the restroom, it's actually upstairs. There's two. Uh, it's like individual. So if you don't need a key to get in, you just need to wait. If you can't open the door, and also please turn off. Uh, not turn off, but put your phone on silent. Uh, if you start ringing in the middle of the talk, I will come grab it myself and then just keep it because I know it's going to be a smartphone. And I'm an Android girl now, so I'm going to take your iPhone for sure. <laughs> and, then, uh, and then what else? Uh, if you have any questions, because all of our speaker will have about 35 minutes or so, they're all going to talk about 20 to 25 minutes, and then we'll have about 5 10 minutes for you to do questions uh, and QA. So please leave your question at the end so you don't interrupt the speaker. That's pretty much it, fair enough. Uh, so now I'm going to quickly introduce Jan Kongro. Jan actually happens to be one of my, probably one of the oldest, not old by age, but older friend uh, since I moved here in 98. So we know each other for about 15 years uh, when we worked together at Siebel. Uh, but now for the last 10 years, he actually, an expert, expert in building DSP, and definitely really understand sort of the art and the science of like driving in stock. So now I'm going to actually uh, let Jan take the stage. And I'm going to do a test with the uh, microphone. Yeah, that works. So first, thanks for being here. Um, I, uh, we started that, um, uh, that conference because, as Edith said, you know, we have a lot of people that uh, come to us and say, hey, you know, I, I'm a French gamer. Uh, what do I need to do to go to Asia, Malaysia, what do I need to do to, to, uh, to have user acquisition, to, to buy some users basically in Latin America or the US. And you know, pretty much the last three years, uh, you know, when I, when I was in MWC, most of the time, uh, people come to us and say, hey, what, what do we need to do? What do we need to do? And um, you know, one of the common themes also is like, they come to us and say, hey, I want to buy user acquisition, how much should I pay? And then my answer is always the same. Uh, you know, when I'm in a good mood, I say it depends, and uh, when I'm in a bad mood, I say I, I have no clue. <laughs> it depends on the okay. game. So today, um, let me just set up my presentation. Today we have a kind of a big agenda and uh, I'm going to try to be 
as detailed as I can. And I think, uh, you know, if you guys want more detail, we're going to be able to talk about it after the conference. But um, uh, we're going to talk about what you can do to drive down, whether it's uh, app stores, you know, DSP and so forth. Me, I'm going to focus on, on app stores and what we call native app stores, like Google Play and Apple. Uh, and, you know, we're going to branch out um, where Nike is going to talk about how you can work with the DSP to drive downloads. Then Edith is going to talk about uh, you know, what you can do from a PR and marketing perspective to drive download. And Bob's going to talk about how you can work with the OEMs uh, to uh, drive download when specifically when you do Android apps. Okay. So uh, it's going to be pretty, pretty heavy. And uh, we are going to focus again on the native, uh, on a native platform. What the what other thing that you should focus on? And uh, you know, hopefully at the end of uh, this meeting. You're going to have a clear idea about what you need to do at the App Store level to drive download just by using the App Store. Um, I'm going to give you like tips and tricks you know, about what you can do. And then the idea is uh, uh, another, another question that I always get you know, again is uh, how much I need to pay you know, for, for, uh, for user acquisition campaign on a CPI mode. And um, what I'm going to give you in the second part of that, uh, of that presentation is what you need to do to be able to work with a DSP effectively and essentially be, uh, be data driven, right? Because when you go to a DSP, you need to have an understanding of, of the value of your user. So I'm going to just try to teach you, you know, what I've learned and how you can implement metrics in order to be able to, to work with a DSP effectively. Um, so these are the two parts. So now here's my favorite slide. Ah, no, just kidding. Uh, it's not my favorite slide, but uh, um, just a little bit about myself. I've been uh, I've been in mobile advertising since 2007 or oh, six, can't remember. I started to monetize uh, the career uh, Orange uh, France Telecom career homepage on mobile, uh, and that was a long time ago. And uh, you know, I stayed in that space uh, for the last eight years, and uh, you know, I worked at. Uh, Adam Fuse, Venti, Mob Clicks, uh, Live Street Media. Um, at Live Street Media, uh, you know, we were basically doing $30 million in uh, revenue out of mobile. Uh, so we built some really nice tool uh, to, uh, to do uh, app download. I'm also like uh, an angel investor. I mean, I've uh, invested in a couple of mobile advertising companies. Uh, the latest one is Lumi Media. Uh, it's a net network that is uh, located in London. Uh, and that is doing pretty well if you're looking for uh, download in Europe. And um, what I love to do is basically build products. What I've done for 10 years, I love to build software that's scalable. You know, like, um, you know, again, at MobClicks, we were doing 19 billion impression a month. Um, you know, we built some pretty incredible technology. And um, lately, what I've been playing with is a loop. Uh, you know, I've been, uh, I've been doing um, that uh, at Trusty and you know, where I'm trying to build some big data platform and uh, pretty much uh, that's, that's my profile. Uh, and if you wonder what is written on my t-shirt here, it's called Control Freak. Um, also, like, if you wonder where I'm from, because I know I don't have an accent at all, uh, like uh, I'm from France, and if there is anything you don't understand, just let me know and I'll start over, okay? Uh, so, just for that. So, how can you make money? I mean, you know, you have a game company, you have an app company, and you basically don't know where to start. In fact, most of my friends, you know, they're like, okay, what should I focus on? I mean, I try to, to put that into a chart. Uh, you know, on the, on the left hand side, you have the effort. On the, on the right hand side, on the x, -y, x axis, you have the cost. We're going to talk today about all these things. Me, I'm going to focus on the native app store and uh, you know how you can drive download uh, uh, out of a ASO, right? Uh, and um, Edith is going to talk about the PR and the third party app store. Um, Nagy is going to talk about user acquisition, your CPI campaigns. And Bob is going to talk about OEMs, which is part of the third party app store there. But why I want to talk about native app store first is that's the most the cost effective way to drive download. Very simple. Right? I mean, like, uh, like uh, if you if you uh, if you have a game, 
you're not going to start to do CPI campaigns with uh, Mopa tomorrow because it's, you're not ready, right? First, you need to, uh, to, to understand how your game is working, what's the use of feedbacks and, and, and so forth. And, uh, you know, the, the app store like Google Play and uh, um, Apple App Store, are just, it's just a cheap way to get users, get people to use your product, get feedback, get metrics and so forth. So, okay, I'm going to use my, my new thing. Uh, so wh why, why does the App Store matter? I mean, when you look at the revenue for Google Play and for um, uh, the Apple App Store, you know, like, it's, it's a huge amount of download and a huge amount of money that is flowing to the apps. Uh, so, yes, there is a lot of money that is flowing, flowing through the App Stores, but there is uh, actually very uh, small amounts of apps that are actually making money, okay? So what you want is, uh, yes, biggest money, but you want that, that chunk of money for your apps and your games, right? And that's where you need to start. Um, you know, like I put Windows and Blackberry, and then when I, when I rehearsed my slide, I was like, Blackberry, ha ha ha. And so, you know, I'm assuming there's not a lot of people that are doing games for Blackberry today, but I'm sure, you know, at one point you will. Uh, but I'm not going to talk about it because I think they are too small. Even though in terms of revenue, you can see also that Windows is kind of catching up, right? So, good for them. But I'm going to focus on uh, the Apple App Store and the uh, Google, Google App Store. Um, so, just to keep it simple, at a high level, when uh, somebody uh, decides to download a, an app, uh, I found that uh, stat on Forbes actually, is that they basically, they basically try one, two or three keywords, they spend five seconds on the App Store and they decide to download or not. You have five you have five seconds to blow them away. Five seconds is not, not much, right? One, two, three, four. Five. She, she knows this thing. <laughs> five. Okay. So so it's really it's really really short. And then um, you like people when they look at uh, when they search for an app, they, they they use maximum three keyword. So you can't screw that up. So what matters? Uh, the three levers uh, when they, uh, that matters are basically the icon, the type for your apps, uh, the screenshot that you display, the first one especially, and uh, the keywords that you use, and another thing is the reviews that you get for your apps, right? We'll talk about that a little bit uh, uh, down the slide, but these are really the three things. Everything else is kind of like, I'm sure you can, there's some other stuff that you can play with, but uh, these are the, the three essential ones. Yeah. Um, so, in terms of tile, if you look at the um, if you look at the uh, successful tile there, you know, like the the challenge is you have to keep it simple. Yet you have to give a good idea of uh, what your what your app is doing. Right? And so, um, one cool one that I love is Path. Right, uh, Path is a, is a super cool design. You know, like uh, it's really recognizable and it's really a brand. Right? I think today, uh, you know, like. Uh, they had the, some issue with the FTC, but that's another thing. Uh, like, uh, I think as far as icon, you know, they, they are, they're really nice. Cash of Clan, I love it too because uh, first of first of when I have my son, my seven-year-old, you know, he know exactly uh, what it is. It's a game where people fight each other. That's why he wants to download it. Can be crush huge success. I mean, I think they come. They, you know, they, they really they really set up their tile as a brand. And I think my advice, my recommendation is like. You can you can tweak your your tile when you do updates to see what works best. You can do some A/B tests there. You know, I've done that with a few of my customers, and um, um, uh, you just need to be aware that uh, in Google Play you can't really put keywords in your tile, but uh, the App Store you know actually it's allowed. But it's a nice things to know for people that are Android focused. Um, optimize your screenshot. Uh, so. You should focus 95% of your effort on the, on the first screenshot because that's pretty much the only thing that people are going to see within these five seconds. They're going to see the tile and they're going to see the first screenshot when they, when they click on it. And uh, there are some, uh, you know, like, uh, I can't remember the stat, but I think in the App Store there's like something like 48% of the apps that are, ne that are never downloaded. Uh, so, uh, you know, like you really need to put some effort into that design to convey uh, you know, the right uh, information on that first screenshot. And I think um, 
what I wanted to show you is again the same uh, companies that uh, you know what I love about Candy Crush is like it takes me a couple of seconds to understand what the game is about right I mean the same you know like uh, if, if, I, if I scratch the same kind of icon it's gonna go down you know like a very very powerful and these guys, you know, I know these guys very well because I took care of a campaign uh, in Europe and the US for a long time. Uh, I think now everything has that game, so, <laughs> you know, like I'm sure they, they're, trying, they're trying to do new games. But uh, they spent actually a lot of money on that screen. They used like scientists and, and, and people to basically uh, make sure that they could convey as much information as they could on that first screen. Uh, Cash of Clan love it too because uh, it's in the same theme than the than the tile. You, you understand exactly what uh, what the game is about. You know, it's about like uh, you know fighting your other um, um, the other people that are in your game and just uh, it's pretty clear that it's a war game. That's what it was. That's, that's pretty successful essentially uh, screenshots. Okay, so I think. You know, like I, I spent a long time or so like dealing with keywords, and you know, like uh, I made my share of mistake there. Uh, but uh, you know, Google Play and um, um, the App Store function differently. Uh, you know, there's some stuff that count as keyword and some stuff that don't count as keyword. Uh, like um, so, for instance, uh, the words in your app title. You know, like uh, for both uh, the Google, Google App Store and uh, Google Play. Google App Store, yes, no? Google Play and uh, the App Store. Uh, you know, like uh, essentially that uh, you can put keyword there and it counts as keyword. Uh, the, the difference is, um, you know, for instance, the description of your of your app. Uh, you know, for Google Play, the long and the short description count as keyword, so you can stuff as many keywords as you want there, but not for Apple. Um, other things, uh, you know, like uh, that is unique to Apple. Uh, the description of your company essentially also can be used as uh, a keywords, not for Google Play. And then, obviously, like uh, the thing that makes uh, uh, Apple unique is you can use your iTunes, iTunes Connect keywords, but they limit the number of uh, keywords to 100 characters. So you really have to get that right. And uh, you know, like. Uh, like four years ago, when I was dealing with that kind of stuff, I actually had no clue what keywords to put. Sorry? Yeah, Go ahead. Uh, um, do these same um, things apply when you're using some of the uh, mobile app search engines like Quixie? Um, well, Quixie leverage, my understanding of Quixie, because actually uh, I had a friend working there, great company. Uh, she didn't tell me any, anything that I shouldn't know, but uh, my understanding is they, they leverage uh, Google Play's functionality. Mm -hmm. So, uh, but you know, they all claim that they have the secret source and, and you know, they also like aggregate information for third party app store. Uh, so, uh, I'm not 100% sure actually. But, uh, you know, I would think that they use the same kind of uh, things uh, to derive at least their, uh, their their data. So, uh, but I don't know how they deal with third party. Uh, but uh, yeah, Quixie is kind of a different one. Okay. Yeah. Um, yeah, and then again, you know, like uh, when you when you input keywords in your iTunes Connect account, you should update that uh, relatively frequently when you do updates, so that you can do some A/B testing and see what works, what doesn't work. I think you know, f again, four years ago when I was playing with that. Uh, I gotta say, sometimes I was number 80, sometimes I was number 160, and I wouldn't understand why. Uh, so I, I really struggle. I mean, today uh, there are a lot of good tools uh, that you can use: SearchRam, Sensor Tower, Mobile Dev HQ, Google Keyword Tool. So where you can see what what uh, competing uh, company are using, right? And uh, basically, they, they give you the keywords that your competitor use. I mean, it's really, really, uh, uh, they go really deep. So, you know, like what I would really recommend if you are, if you want to be serious about it, is using, uh, you know, one or many of these tools to understand which keywords work for you, what are your competitor using, you know, and so forth. I mean, I, I use SearchMan quite a bit. Uh, 
just because it's cheap <laughs> and uh, it's pretty good. Uh, but uh, Mobile Data HQ is actually uh, relatively uh, new, at least newer than search mode, uh, at least for me. And um, all these tools are very good and uh, that really give you uh, a lot of data that are important to maximize uh, your app store ranking, etc. So I think I really recommend that if you have a team in the game, you know, you use one of these tools. Other things, uh, so second, you know, we have categories in, um, in the Apple App Store and Google Play. Uh, Apple has a secondary category, it's mainly for category search. Uh, it doesn't do much, uh, but uh, primary category are used for keyword and count as keyword. So uh, that's something also that you want to, uh, uh, to leverage. Any question on that so far? How's the accent? I just need to, to ask. Can you, can you understand what I said? No way. You're French. You're going to be French. OK. What are you talking about? <laughs> um, yeah, OK. Rating and reviews. So this can kill your app, OK? If you have like a, like a you know, like one of these, app, one of these uh, uh, apps, you go and the first review that you see is like, uh, or the, which is the latest review, you have zero stars, somebody's bitching about something you've done that you don't like. That's kill your app, okay? I mean, it's just, nobody wants that. So, uh, you know, you really need to be good at this. And uh, you might have 95, <coughs> oh, yeah, I need to, to speed up, thank you. Uh, you might have like a, a lot of stars, you know, like from other users, but, you know, the latest one is a, is a, is a zero star. I mean, the guy is pissed off, he doesn't like the French, whatever. But, um, so you need to be, to be careful. So, you know, like when you start your, uh, when you start your app, you ask your friend and family, you know, hey, can you help me out? You know, I need some good reviews. So that's a good way to start because, uh, you know, that at least give you reviews and give you some good reviews, hopefully, if you get along with your family, that is. Um, and then also, you know, like, a uh, lot of people give you bad review and give you bad review in the app store when it happens because they have no other way to do it, okay? They're pissed off, they want to tell you something, but they, they have no outlet. So one of the things that, uh, we've done is like you provide them a way to give feedback within the app, okay? So that, that review doesn't go into the app store. And then you communicate directly to users. That works too, right? I mean, and then, you know, like uh, um, another trick is, uh, you know, to ask uh, very frequently for five-star review. I mean, I don't know if you, if you ever uh, looked at uh, your apps, but a lot of times like, hey, do you want to rate me? If you really like my app, why don't you rate me? Why don't you give me five star? Okay, that's essentially what, uh, what they say. So uh, that's another thing that gets you good reviews and uh, incentivizes the person to, to give you something positive, essentially. Uh, and then, otherwise, if you have money, use Attentive. Uh, it's pretty good. I mean, there's a lot of review on the web out there for them. They take care of the entire customer service, they manage, their, they manage your review. It's a pretty good tool. Uh, that's what uh, I would do. If you have money, if you don't have money, try to try to do the email, contact us if you have any feedback and so forth. Oops. Okay. Other advice. Yeah. So, if you just release your app and you're trying to optimize App Store, uh, to optimize your rank on the App Store, don't go into a CPI campaign right away. You're not ready. You need data. You need data from from uh, from your app to give to a DSP so that it can help you. If you go to a DSP and you say, "Hey, I just have a new app," you know, the guy's gonna say, "Nagi is gonna say, what is it? Uh, yeah, oh, Nagi, yeah. Nagi's gonna say, okay, give me some metrics about your app. What what is your what what is the value of your user? What are you ready to pay? Or what are you ready? What kind of money are you ready to lose on every user in order to increase the number of users that you have? So the point is. You start first by App Store because you want to get users and you want to get data. And the kind of data that you want to get are basically the average revenue that you get from them. And you want to optimize your, your, your apps so that you have a lot of data that you can give to a DSP so that you know how much you want to pay. You're not ready to go to a DSP until you have a lot of data about your app. Uh, yeah, so. I was a little bit ahead of my slide here, but yeah, I mean, so what, what exactly you want to know is, uh, you know, like Nagi and I was, were working a couple of months ago with, with a gaming company from China, 
And uh, the first question we asked them is like, so what are you ready to pay for a European user? And they're like, I don't know, I, do, I just have data on, on China. And I'm like, well, okay, so how much data do you have on China? To understand, maybe we can do some, uh, some, some kind of projection about how much more money you would get in Europe and so forth. And the truth is they had no data. They had no data. So we told them, you know, come back, optimize, optimize your, get more data for us, optimize the App Store from now on, in this different country, and then we'll, we'll be able to work with you because otherwise you just, it's not going to work, right? Um, and so how do you get uh, more, uh, what kind of data you want to get? I mean, you want to get data about how much revenue you can make out of this user, right? Most of people have two kind of revenue, advertising, okay, and in-app purchase. That's very simple, right? And then, you know, like uh, what they're trying to, to do, everybody's trying to do the same thing, get more money from advertising, get more money from in-app purchase. And um, so you need to get an idea of how much money you can get out of a user on a monthly basis, how, for how long, you know? I, I don't know if uh, you play games, but me, after six months, I'm done. My seven-year-old, he play game forever, but he's seven-year-old. But most of people just have a lifetime, you know, in which they stop playing games. They just, they just, uh, they just don't want to play anymore. So you want to, and we're going to talk about what you should build as far as analytics in order to be ready to work with the DSP. Okay, but what you really want to know is the average revenue that you make out of a user in a country for a given platform. So what does it mean? I want to know for, you, for the user in the US, how much I, I, I make on Android or I make on iOS. But that's, that's simple. When you know how much you, you're going to make, you can, pro, you, can, you can project how much more you, you're going to make in 12 months, and you can start, you can start, you can start making some projection about how much you want to pay for, for, for current user. And that's what, uh, that's what your system, your analytic system should be built on in order, to, uh, in order to be able to work with a DSP. Before that, you know, unless your game is, is, is great, and I'm sure they're all great, like uh, before that, you're not ready. You need to you, stick to the app store for now. Okay. Uh, okay. Uh, so there's somebody famous that said, I cannot optimize for what I don't measure. That's Nagi over there. Uh, but I think it's a great quote. Uh, basically, w when you work with a DSP, they, they, they want to know, you know, the game is always the same, right? I mean, the gamer doesn't want to pay that much, and then the, the, the DSP uh, doesn't uh, you know, want to make money, right? And so, if you, don't, if you don't have any metrics, you don't know what you want to pay, and the, the DSP doesn't know what he's optimizing for. So, everybody's like, yeah, whatever. We work on a CPM basis, that's going to be easier. Um, so when we, you know, when I worked with a couple of my buddies or my startups, uh, the, the goal was always to build a real-time dashboard that tells me the revenue, the, what I call the real-time revenue per, per user, the real-time projected revenue, okay? And uh, I actually, the, the formula here is a bit complicated, but uh, I actually, I think it's going to be easier to look at this. By the way, I stole this uh, map from Chartboost, but uh, I use it for my purpose. But what you want is for each of these countries to, understand, to understand what is the predicted revenue that you can have for a given user by platform. Right? For the US, Android might be $1, iPhone might be 2 And you want to be able to give that, time, that, that kind of data near real time to a DSP so that it can work with you. And it can be effective. Unless you're Candy Crush, that's the kind of uh, visibility that you want for your app. So that, you know, let's say in Australia, you know, the prices are higher. Uh, in Europe, you know, like uh, in Ukraine, no, not Ukraine, like uh, maybe another country then, like um, Italy, the prices are slightly lower and so forth, right? So this is what you want to have in order to, to be able to work on the CPI model. All right, so just deep, deep diving on the metrics that you want to use, uh, you know, in order to understand your game, the user engagement is always a big one. I mean, user engagement is a buzzword. I mean, it can be anything and everything. Um, 
you want to, to understand, uh, you know, if you buy for a user or if you download a user, uh, you know, you want to have payback days when you when you start working on a CPI mode. Uh, predicted churn is basically the number of users that are likely to leave, you know, after a, a, a certain period of time. Uh, the, re the remaining time uh, lifetime is, um, you know, you have a given lifetime. If you had somebody for a couple of days, you can predict when he's going to leave your game. So you need to have, to have all these. Um, uh, these metrics in place. The most important is the predicted lifetime value, obviously. Uh, and uh, yes, App Store ranking is important, but uh, you know it's kind of a, uh, it's kind of less important as well. These uh, actually these metrics are ordered by more most important to, to less important to me. Um, and then you know daily average users CPI is more like a, something you need to think after you have all these uh, metrics in place. Um, so I hope that gives you some lights. I don't know how much time I have. Five more minutes. Five more minutes with question or without? Yeah, yeah. Five, five minutes. Okay, five minutes. That's all you have. That's all I have? Oh, go ahead. Okay. okay. Uh, it's okay. Let's go. So now that you have this, uh, you have, uh, you've done your job on the, on the keywords, you've done your job on the icon, and uh, you have a lot of data. You have that real-time data for, for DSP, you're ready to go big, okay? You're ready to, to work with a, uh, basically a third-party app store, or you're ready to work with a DSP. Anything short for me, you know, it's, it's going to be a little bit, uh, you won't know whether you're going to be successful. Uh, again, I had my part of failure, by the way. <laughs> we launched a couple of apps that, uh, that didn't work, but uh, uh, that's okay. So. Just to make sure I can address question, I'm going to put um, the last slide and take questions. Yes? Yeah, I have a question about what should be targeting? Uh, pretty big. Uh, we, uh, you know, like in, um, so I've built DMP for uh, Live Street and for Mobflex. And uh, uh, I can tell you a few things about that if you want. Like, uh, uh, you know, buying user or being able to buy user, and I think Maggie's going to talk about this, uh, is very important because, as you may know, like uh, the most active user in the last seven days are usually the most active user in the next seven days. You know, and then you divide by, by, by buyer and clicker, right, gamer and data. So, um, so, it's, so if you're in the demand side business, uh, you want to be able to, to do that like this. You need to be able also to buy user at, at, a, at a higher price when you see them coming to you via DLP. Uh, so there's all these tips and tricks, uh, but that's more on the demand side than the gamer side. I think uh, if you do also uh, cross promotion, like uh, you can work with other uh, you know, gamers to share IFA so that they can, you know, they can, you, know, you can essentially send user data to, to RTB players so that they can retarget these particular players and send them over games. That's really important. I hope I answered your question. Yeah? Uh, you talked about the importance of optimizing that first glance for people, which makes sense. But um, you talked about AD testing that, which also makes a lot of sense. The problem there is that do you know of a place where you can actually do AD? Because if you are, you need a control in order to AD properly. If you do that in a store, you're at a later phase, you're, you're, you've got a different product and update. Do you know of ways or people who have done more science oriented AV or things like downloading icons and first screens? Uh, on Android, you can do more things uh, because uh, you know you have third party app store and you can basically test. You know, if you're, essentially, if you're in Asia, you can do a lot more things. Uh, you know, should we can talk about that? Uh, when it comes to the Apple App Store, um, you can do much except when you update your uh, your apps, you can just do a small changes <coughs> to your icon. Let's see if it works better. But then you wanna, you wanna, you know, it's kind of you have to do an update. Right. It's not, it's not really. That's what I call A/B testing. I think that's the best you can do. Yeah, I don't know anything else. Yeah. Yes, sir. So you talked about the native apps for optimization. How do you see with uh, the Tizen store, the Mozilla store, Nokia's coming in, Android store, the Kindle store? You talked about 
four scores, but there's actually probably twice that many, and they're going to become more fragmented. Yeah. So do you think the native way of going is where ASO is going in the future, or is it going to be more cross-platform? Well, I, I worked a lot with uh, Amazon. Um, actually, Amazon is something I could have put up there, because they, they are doing pretty good. But for me, it's really Android versus Apple, versus iOS, right? So uh, I should have put, you know, probably uh, um, the Amazon store. Maybe I shouldn't do my slide, you know, the day before. But uh, um, yeah, I think it's really Android versus iOS for me. Like, you know, even when you look at the, the third-party app store in the uh, in Asia and all that stuff, I think this stuff's gonna go away. You know, I know that uh, Google is banned from China and all that stuff, but I I really see that consolidating uh, in the future. I think uh, I think it's gonna be Android versus. Apple, you know, as long as uh, Apple is better from China, you know, that still fragments the market for a lot of players there. But um, for me, I, maybe wrongly or rightly, I don't see Amazon or Google Play as a different marketplace. But you know, Tizen, do you think Tizen will be a different marketplace with Samsung's apps? Or? Uh, I don't know. I don't know. Um, you know, like uh, I think uh, Firefox is an interesting also uh, uh, marketplace there. Uh, like Ubuntu is trying to do stuff. We, I saw them in MWC. Um, you know, I think they don't have to do nice. I think the, the, the problem is, uh, you know, it's really Android versus Google right now. But you know, we see BlackBerry and Nokia. They used to be the dominant player five years ago. Maybe Google and Apple will screw it up. I don't see that happening, but who knows? Yeah. Yes. You got a question? Oh, last question. Jeez, it's going to be a good one. I'm going to have to pick somebody if there's no last question. Question? All right. Thank you.